Today, I'm going to show you how to build this expandable side menu from scratch. I'll go over the entire HTML structure, all the interactivity with vanilla JavaScript, and the styling with CSS. Let's get started. So if you're new to my channel, I make videos on UX, UI design, and front-end coding. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment down below so I know what kind of tutorial you would like to see next. So jumping right into it, I'm opening up a CodePen project. In the HTML, I already have a link to the font family I'm going to use for the project. And within the body, I already picked out several icons that I want to use for this project. In the CSS, I already declared variables in the root and added some basic styling, like setting the box sizing set to border box and a margin and padding to zero. And the JavaScript is completely empty. So I'm going to show you the full coding tutorial from beginning to end, but to get started, I'm going to jump inside of the design file so that way we can actually see what we're going to build. So inside of the Figma design, we can see the layout for this project. So I essentially want to create a side menu that has two states. It will have a closed state and it will have an open state. When it's in the open state, I want the label for the icon to be visible right next to it. And in the closed state, I want that label to go away. I also want there to be this little expandable icon that the user can tap on that will change the state of the side menu. So initially in the open state, I want this icon to indicate that if the user were to tap it, it would go to the closed state and if the user tapped the icon in the closed state, it would bring them to the open state. I also want one of the links to always be active on this page. So for this example, the user will start with the analytics being active, but they can tap on another section and then that element will become active. So there are a couple of different elements we have to account for in this design, but let's jump inside of the code so we can actually get this project started. So I'm going to go inside the body tags of the HTML. And within the body tags, first I'm going to create a nav with a class of nav. The reason why I'm doing this is because I'm going to follow the BEM model for the naming convention. So that's why I'm including that class of nav. And so all of the elements are going to be contained within this nav. Now, the first element we have here is this SVG, and this is actually the expand icon. So I'm going to take this SVG and place it in the code. And I'm going to give it a class of nav expand. Next, I'm going to create an unordered list that will hold all of the nav icons. So I'm going to create a list with a class of nav list. For the nav list, there'll be several list items, each with a class of nav list item. For each list item, I want them to be a clickable element. So I will include an A tag. And for right now, I'll just add a hashtag as a placeholder. Every link will include an SVG and a label. So I'm going to add the SVG, and then I'm also going to add a paragraph tag with the name. So this is the basic structure for every single list item. So I'm just going to duplicate it several times and then replace it with the actual copy and icons. So this is actually all of the HTML that we need for the project and everything else will be completed within CSS and within JavaScript. So jumping inside of the CSS, first I'm going to go inside of the body tag and just add a different background color. Next, I'm going to work on the styling of that class of nav. So again, this nav holds the entire element. And right now I'm using SCSS, which will allow me to nest certain elements. So that way my code will be really organized. If you're not using SCSS, you're just going to have to call out each class manually. But within here, I'm going to reference that class of nav and I'm going to set the position to relative. I'm going to change the background color and add a box shadow. I'm going to set the height to 100% of the viewport height. 
Next, I'm going to work on this little expand icon. So here I added the class of nav expand. So within that nav, I can just write and expand and add its properties there. So I'm going to specify a width and height and a fill. I'm also going to add the same background color and box shadow as the actual nav bar. I'm going to add a border radius of 50%. I'm going to set the position of this to absolute with a particular right and top positioning. To make sure this element is always at the top, I'm going to set a specific Z index and also set the cursor to pointer. And then for the initial state at the beginning, it's going to be in the open state. So I need this icon to be rotated. So here I'm going to set the transform of a rotate Z. So now we can see that it's rotated. It's right over here on the edge of the screen, which we will move later on. And when this thing is tapped on, I actually want it to rotate. So here I'm going to add a transition of the transform for 200 milliseconds ease and out. Then within this expand icon, I'm going to add a hover state. So here I'm going to write and hover, and I'm just going to change the fill. Next, I'm going to work on the actual list. So still within that nav class, I'm going to reference the list and I'm going to set the display of this to flex with a flex direction of column. And then I'm going to reference the list items. So I'm going to write and item. I'm going to set the list style to none. I'm going to add a transition here of all with 200 milliseconds ease in. Then I'm just going to add some padding I'm going to add a border left here and it's because for the active state, I'm going to add a border. So I just want to keep it consistent. And then I'm also going to add cursor to pointer. For the first element, I want it to be clear that this is the icon for the company and these are the actual nav items. So I'm going to add a bit of space between that first element. So here I'm going to write and first child and add a margin bottom. I'm also going to add a hover state of the background color. And then I'm going to apply styling for the actual link. So here I'm going to reference the A tag. I'm going to add a display of flex here as well. So now the text is right beside the icon. I'm going to add a gap of one REM. I'm going to align the items in the center. I'm going to set the color to a variable and then also add text decoration none. I'm also going to modify the font weight. Then I'm going to work on each SVG. So I'm just going to set the fill to a particular variable and also specify the width. So now it's starting to look much better. I'm actually going to modify the position of the nav bar to absolute. So now that looks much better. Next, I'm going to work on the active state. So if we go back to the design, we can see that for the active state, there's a border to the left. There is a background color for the link and the text and the icon have a different color. So now I'm going to create that state within the CSS. So here I'm going to write and active and I'm going to set a background color and a border left. Then within that active class, I'm also going to change the color and the fill for the SVG and the paragraph tag. So here I'm going to write SVG comma paragraph tag and modify the color and the fill. Now, initially I do want that analytics tab to be in the active state when the page loads. So back in my HTML, I'm going to go back to my list item and add another class. And the class I'm going to add is nav list item active. So now we can actually see this element in the active state. So the last thing I'm going to do is add the styling for the closed state. So right now the menu is in the open state, but when the user taps on this icon, I want the icon to rotate 180 degrees and I want the paragraph tags to disappear and the size of the menu to decrease. So here I'm going to add the styling for that. So I'm going to create a class called closed. So here I'm going to write and dash closed 
and when it is in the closed state, I want to change the icon. So remember we called this icon nav expand. So here I can say and expand. Because when it is in the closed state, I want to modify this property of the expand state, which is this SVG right here. So I'm going to transform it by rotating it in the Z direction. Initially, I have it as negative 180 degrees. So for the closed state, I'm just going to set it to zero degrees. Then I'm also going to reference the paragraph tag within the list item, which again references this label. And I'm just going to set the display of it to none. So this is all of the CSS work. And now we can jump inside of the JavaScript and add some interactivity to this. So within the JavaScript, first, I like to reference certain tags I have in the HTML by creating variables. So here I'm going to create a variable called nav expand. And I want this to reference this icon right here. So in the HTML, I added a class of nav expand. So here I'm going to add a document.query selector and reference that class. I'm also going to want to reference that class of nav because I'm going to add the close state to the actual nav. So here I'm going to say let nav equal document.query selector and then reference that class as well. And then I'm going to reference the actual list items because I want them to be in the active state if the user taps on it. So here I'm going to say let nav list item equal document.query selector and then reference that nav list item. Great, so now we can add event listeners so we can pay attention to when the user interacts with the page. So the first thing I'm going to do is add an event listener for this icon. So here I'm going to say nav expand dot add event listener. And I'm going to listen for a click. And for this function, I want to toggle the nav closed class. So again, in the CSS, in that closed class, that was where we determined the closed state. So we basically remove the label tag and we change the direction of this icon. So now I'm expecting that when I tap on this, I will see a difference in the UI. So I tap on it and now we can actually see the closed state. So the last thing I'm going to do is add some interactivity for the links. So if I actually tap on trends or messages, the active state will move from analytics to that actual thing that I tapped on. So here I'm going to reference the nav list item. And then I'm going to write for each. Now, the reason why I can do this is because I added a query selector all, which basically grabs all the elements with this particular class assigned to it. And then I'm going to write link and then an arrow. And so for each nav list item, when it is clicked on, I'm going to add an event listener that will trigger this function called list active. Now, the last thing I need to do is actually define that list active. So here I'm going to include a function called list active. And I basically want to go through each nav list item and remove the active class and then only assign that class to the element that I tapped on. So here I'm going to write nav list item. For each link, I'm going to remove that class list of active. And then for the one that I tapped on, so here I'm going to write this, meaning the one that I actually selected, I'm going to add the class list of active. So again, I added a document.querySelectorAll, which would grab every single one of these list items. And so for each one, I want to pay attention to when it is clicked. And when it is clicked, I'm going to run this function called listActive. Then I want to go through the list and remove the active class from all of the list items and only add it back to the one that I actually selected. So now let's try it out. I'm going to click on trends and now this is in the active state and the analytics is no longer in the active state. And I click on settings and it has the same behavior and I can open and close the side menu. So there you go. That's how I created this expandable side menu from scratch. Please let me know if you have any questions on the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.